So the first night of the National AFL 2023 draft is over. It was a marathon, it took absolutely ages, 29 picks, but it wasn't without genuine excitement and surprises as several clubs ruined mock drafts, including mine, and engaged heavily with live trading to get the plays they wanted. So it was exciting, there were bolters, there were sliders, there was everything. So here is how the night unfolded. So as expected, the Eagles took Harley Reid with pick one. I think that was pretty obvious. Um, there were probably a few murmurs and whispers of other teams trading up for Harley, but in the end, the Eagles stuck fat with him and took uh, him with the first pick of the draft. Then he was followed by North Melbourne, who picked Colby McKercher. I think that was pretty unsurprising as well. The first seven picks of the draft were all pretty uh, predictable. Uh, with North Melbourne taking McKercher and Dersma also bidding on Walter, which meant Gold Coast got Walter, and then Hawks take Watson, Bulldogs take Sanders, and then Melbourne take Windsor, who was a major bolter in this year's draft, uh, bolting up from top 20 contention all the way into the top 10, so well done to him. Then the chaos began when Adelaide traded up to pick 8 to acquire Daniel Curtin, they traded picks 8 and 17, and the Giants traded picks 11, 15, and a future second. So I think that's a pretty win-win trade for both teams. And we saw Adelaide get their man in Daniel Curtin. He's going to form a really nice trio with Jordan Butts and Nick Murray in the years to come. And him and Jordan Dawson's going to be a scary prospect for any team that's facing them with their ball use off their left boots. Then the Cats bid on Ethan Reed, and then Essendon traded up for Nate Caddy so they traded pick 11 and 31 to move up one spot to pick 10 so a lot of Bombers fans were pretty mad about this because I'm pretty sure they would have been happy with Connor O'Sullivan as well so to lose pick 31 to uh, take Caddy over O'Sullivan was to the displeasure of Bombers fans but in the end Essendon get the player they want and I think he suits them uh, a lot better than O'Sullivan since he's a forward. The Bombers already have uh, Ridley, uh, Redman, um, etc. But Caddy is probably the long-term replacement for Stringer and gives them that scoring power alongside Peter Wright going forward. So that means that the Cats were left with Connor O'Sullivan and that is a very nice pick with the departure of Radagalia over the off-season which means that him and Sam DeConing is going to be a really dynamic duo going forward over the next decade. Then the Giants pulled off a major surprise with the pick they traded in from Adelaide, taking Phoenix Gothard at pick 12. We saw how surprised Connor O'Sullivan was by that, him uh, <laughs> ditching Joel Selwood to run to the Gothard and celebrate. Gothard didn't even have his uh, Talent League shirt on, so that's how much of a surprise it was for him but he's in the end been picked at pick 12 well done to him the Giants clearly looking for a very good small forward to partner Daniels and Bedford going forward and they got that in Gothard who I think he came first in the uh, vertical jump in the combine so he's got a major leap uh, he's a very dynamic small forward, so a good result for the Giants. And then Melbourne, I think this was pretty predictable as well. They take Colton Dolstrup at pick 13, who's going to be start off his career as a forward for the D's, um, as that tough Mongol forward. But eventually, I think he'll transition into more of a midfielder, potentially to replace Jack Viney in the years to come as that tough inside ball. Swans, well, <laughs> in typical fashion, bid me Swans. They bid on Jake Rogers at 14, then they bid on Jordan Croft at 15. So forcing the Suns and the Bulldogs to match their bids, and then taking, in the end, Will Green as their Ruckman in at pick 16 to replace Hickey uh, and potentially Grundy over the long term. Grundy, yeah, obviously a really good recruit at 29 years old, but he's pretty old now and Will Green's going to be a long-term project to uh, be his understudy over the next few years, studying under arguably one of the best Ruckman in the league at full fitness. 
So it's a good opportunity for Wool Green to potentially develop into a really solid Ruckman for the Swans over the next decade or so. Then at 17, the Saints were on the clock, but the Giants decided to trade up with pick 18 and a future second. So essentially doing what the Bombers did, moving up one position with a second round pick. I think this is tied to Adelaide, so it's essentially Adelaide's pick uh, and pick 18 for 17. And they traded up to get James Leake in the end, who is a versatile defender forward, 187 centimetres. Clearly the Giants wanted a swingman, which they in the end got. Because I, I don't think the Saints would have taken him, um, even if they had kept the pick. So to get a win-win scenario for both teams, they decided to do the trade. And in the end, the Saints then take Darcy Wilson as their outside winger with class and run uh, to complement the recruitment of the likes of Liam Henry and Paddy Dow. And as we move down the order, the North Melbourne Footy Club bid on William McCabe, forcing the Hawks to match that bid. Uh, the Hawks will be really happy with that as their next fullback because their defence uh, has been pretty shocking in terms of the key positions. So to get McCabe in at 197 centimetres, potentially as a centre-half back or even a full-back in his first year is going to be really exciting for Hawks fans to have someone to rely on week in, week out to do their role. Then North Melbourne take Taylor Goad and they stole him from right under the noses of Adelaide. Um, he is a South Australian ruckman, the next Max Gorn apparently. Uh, he's got some very similar attributes, he's very fast, good below his needs and he's uh, 207 centimetres so he's extremely tall. So he's going to be a really troublesome ruckman to deal with for opposition clubs in the future. I think North Melbourne have done really well there with that pick. Um, and fortunately for Adelaide, that meant um, they couldn't get him with their third pick. I think, yeah, their plan was always to get him with their third pick at 27. Uh, and their second pick was always going to be Charlie Edwards, if not taken before, who's a 191 centimetre tall inside midfielder with burst. So um, a big midfielder for the Crows midfield lineup alongside Laird, Dawson, um, etc. So I think. The Crows kind of lacked that tall midfielder um, who is like under 25 years old. So Charlie Edwards as a 19 year old next year is going to be a really nice point of difference to the Crows list. And then we have North Melbourne's next two picks, uh, their fourth and fifth pick. They took Will Dawson, which was a bit of a surprise. I thought they would have taken Zach Ustelsky, but Dawson is equally as good of a key defender fullback. Um, he's going to be very solid alongside Toby Pink and Aiden Core next year um, and then they took Hart Riley Hardiman so a couple of defensive upgrades there Hardiman being um, a taller halfback I thought he was 188 centimeters but apparently he's a bit shorter but nevertheless he is a halfback with really good kicking skills a lot of speed can intercept as well in the air so he's a really nice uh, well-rounded halfback. You can also move up into the wing and into the midfield eventually if the, uh, if required. Then the Swans were forced to bid on Caden Cleary by the Pies. Inside midfield of 182 centimetres. He's a very good ball winner in the contest and I'm sure that would have appealed to Collingwood but Bidney get a taste of their own medicine uh, having their play bid on earlier than expected and then the Pies took Harry DiMatteo as their utility pick. A lot of speed, so suits their system very well. Um, plays half back, half forward, midfield, so he's going to be able to play anywhere for the Pies in his early years before they settle him into a position. I think it, long term that would be in the midfield, but to start with, half back, half forward, uh, very well capable of doing so. Then the Crows bid on Will Graham at 26, so the Suns get their fourth academy player um, in the first round. He's a halfback, can play through the midfield. He played in the Suns VFL Premiership um, season, so he's definitely ready for AFL. Whether he can get into that starting 23 with so much talent now um, is the next question, but he's definitely capable. And uh, even if he starts in the VFL, he's going to be a really underrated prospect in this year's draft behind all the other Sun stars who've been drafted. So he's been quite underrated, but... We'll see 
uh, exactly how good he is in the years to come. So then the Crows were back on the clock and they miss out on Taylor Goat at this pick. So they take a major bolter in Oscar Ryan, who I didn't even have been taken in the national draft. I thought he would have been taken in the rookie draft, but as a Victorian to come into the Crows, 187 centimeter defender. Um, yeah, he's. I think he's an intercept defender and uh, got a bit of rebound to him as well. So he's a very dynamic and versatile defender, but capable of several roles. So it's a good pick for the Crows. I don't know if this is a bit of a reach for Ryan, but the cl Crows clearly had a need that they need wanted to address, and Oscar Ryan clearly fits that bill. Which then left St. Kilda and Carlton to finish off the draft. Two very mercurial small forwards. The Saints first taking Lance Collard, WA's best small forward prospect for this year. A uh, bit of a worry regarding his go-home factor. He's listed as 185 centimeters, but on all of the draft profiles, he's 180 centimeters. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, because um, 185 centimeters for his skill set and his position is going to be would be so good um, as a Saints supporter. But problem with him is the go-home factor. He's very close with his family, and apparently there's been rumors of him. Um, declaring before even being drafted that he'd want to request a trade back home um, if he was drafted interstate so a bit of a worry there but Uncle Mason Wood, Uncle Bradley Hill they'll take care of him um, and he's already been welcomed by several Saints players with open arms and then Carlton take Ashton Moyer who was going, who's predicted to be a potential top 5 pick um, for this year's draft last year had a few injury issues, had a few form slumps this year, so slid down the order majorly. But I think Carlton have got a really nice player here with the last pick of the first round. He's uh, He suits the need for them, uh, Mercurial small forward. I think they're kind of missing that dynamic X-Factor small forward at the moment. I think, they, I think that's the only missing piece of their uh, lineup. Everywhere else, they've got exceptional talent, so to address... Um, their small forward stocks as as well as probably picking the best available player uh, with the most potential is a fantastic pick for the Blues at 29 so they wrapped up the draft there and that does it for night one of the draft West Coast on the clock with the first pick of the second night so expect there to be a few offers for that pick there are still several really good players available. We've got Zachary Stelsky available, Archer Reed, Ollie Murphy, Ari Schaumaker. So a lot of key defensive options, key or key position options. And then Archie Roberts as a halfback. I expect e the Eagles to take him. Um, but yeah, he could easily slide to, through to maybe St. Kilda or Carlton. Will, uh, Will Dawson's been taken. George Stevens, I think the Cats will be a chance there. Uh, Mitch Edwards as well, Tu Jath available, Luaman Luau, Angus Hasty, Luke Lloyd, Logan Morris, Clay Hall, Colsha Deer, a lot of good players still available, Colin Sanchez, Joel Frazier as well, Cooper Simpson, so there's definitely so much good talent left, this draft is so even through this later part, this second round onwards, um, yeah there's so many uh, good options through this 30 to 50 area so expect there to be a lot of unexpected uh, and inaccurate mock draft picks um, to occur through this part I think the draft will end around pick 57 ish um, with Port Adelaide I think so uh, uh, as that pick approaches I think a lot of the better names will be taken off and um, that last tier of the draft will appear around um, this this kind of area after all the mid-tier talents taken off I think around 49, 50, 51 ish that's when the last tier will come up where it's just going to be like mature age recruits and then uh, very needs based players uh, in the end so look out for night 2 of the AFL draft that's the night 1 review done a little bit of a preview for night 2 hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to drop a like on the video comment your thoughts on night 1 and what you guys are hoping for for night 2 for your clubs make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video